what you're about to see may shock you. Don't have a heart attack now. Somebody help your mans up. Help. Knees weak or old age. The real Slim Shady can't stand up. Your reply got the crowd yelling woo. So before you die, let's see who can out petty who with your corny lines. Slim your old Al Kelly ooh, but I'm 45 and I'm still out selling you. This is a one inch sensor, but it's a one inch sensor on a portable drone. This is a one inch sensor on a full size drone. This is a full size camera. This is not. This drone is in a class of its own. This is the only portable drone in the world with a one inch sensor. Now how it utilizes that sensor or how the pixel processes, well that's a different story. But as far as today goes, this is the best quality day and night that you can get out of any portable drone in this world. And this is arguably the smallest one inch camera in the world. But why is it that we can't compare it to this full size bad boy over here? Well, because of the capabilities. This does 4K at 60 frames a second, 4000 by 3000 resolution. The Mavic only does 3000 by 2000 resolution. So automatically, it's at a disadvantage. But if you do want to see some daytime footage, go check out Billy Kyle's video. And I'm going to leave a link in the description right here. Billy Kyle made an excellent video comparing the two footages in the day and a little bit in the night. But more so in the day, it was absolutely phenomenal. The two drones were flying and recording at 4K, 30 frames a second. And the footage looked pretty much almost identical on both drones. This one was a lot cooler. The Mavic 2 Pro was a lot warmer. And that was the major difference that stuck out. The reason I won't do a daytime comparison with these two drones is because I only film in 4K, 4000 by 3000 resolution. And I, and I film at 60 frames a second, period. That's what I bought the Phantom for. There's no way I'm going to compromise and even turn my video quality down, not for one second. Now to each their own. Some people will say, oh, you could have done it. I film in 4K 30 frames a second and uh, it looks absolutely phenomenal. I post and I'm well, good for you. But for me, the image to me is absolutely buttery smooth and to my eyes it's the sweetest looking thing ever to a lot of other people they can't even tell the difference like they can't tell the difference between this footage and the zooms footage and they can't tell the difference between this footage sometimes and this footage and the Autel Evo and some people can't even tell the difference between this and the original Mavic Pro's footage hey it's just the way it is. I get it. It's very hard to recognize unless you put these things side by side and most of the time you zoom in and you stop and you compare. If I film at 60 frames a second with this and I film at 30 frames a second with this, what am I going to render at? Am I going to render at 30 frames a second? And then you'll never be able to see the full qualities of this because it's not rendering at 60. Or do I render this at 60 and then this doesn't look good at 30, giving this a disadvantage? So you see, it's very hard for me to compare these a day. And I will not reduce this to 30 frames a second to compare it to this. Because that won't be a fair comparison. If I'm going to test, I'm going to test at its best abilities. And this guy here, 4K, 4000 by 3000 at 60 frames a second is oh now don't get me wrong would I use the 24 frames a second the Hollywood style yes I would but I would only use that if I'm filming me or I'm filming another person that's moving because the eyes are trained for that but if I'm just filming but if I'm just filming landscape and aerial views of the sky and buildings and stuff like that trees and I want the smoothest possible image. And don't get me wrong, these things move pretty fast. This moves a little bit faster than this. 
So the more I can capture, being that I'm flying faster, obviously, do the math, translates to a better quality image and a smoother quality image. One of the things that I didn't like about this is that they did increase the speed, but they didn't increase the frame rate. Now, how badly does that affect me? Not too bad, because I can always fly a little slower, and I use the speed to get home when there's a lot of wind. And if you stop and really think about it, that's how a lot of previous Mavic Pro owners lost their drones. The drone just didn't have the power to power through the wind to get back home in time most of the time, even in sports mode. But they did a fantastic job with this. So I try to fly as slow as possible and utilize the 30 frames a second to capture as much as I can every second. Now we've already established the 4K 60 frames a second thing and in the day and blah 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 blah. But why is it that things change at night? The more your frame rate, the darker the image. So 24 frames a second is lighter than 60 frames a second. So the less frames you do, the lighter your image. And when you're flying at night, you don't have much light. And you need as light an image as possible, hoping to catch as much details as you can. And that's why 60 frames a second doesn't cut it in the night. I have to come down to this bad boy's level, which is 30 frames a second. But it gets better. Not only the frame rate, the resolution. When you're filming in 4000 by 3000, the image gets darker. And that's all great and dandy in the day, because most of the time we use filters to block some of the light out. But that's not the case at night. So guess what? I can't for film in 4000 by 3000. Now I've got to come down to 3000 by 2000. And that's where the two of these guys here pretty much sit on the same level playing field. And this is when, guys, things get real interesting. I mean, really interesting. What you're about to see may shock you.